guys, welcome back. We're going to start off this lesson on finding the volume of right rectangular prisms, which is a shape that we're all familiar with when we get those Amazon packages in the mail. That box is a right rectangular prism. And we are going to think about these kind of figures in terms of their volume. Now, the volume of a rectangular prism is going to be dependent on its dimensions, in other words, its length, its width, and its height. So for example, let's consider a rectangular prism with a length of 10 inches, a width of 4 inches, and a height of 7 inches. Now we should have a basic understanding that the volume of a figure is a measure of the amount of space inside of that figure or how much it can hold inside. Now you may also know that in geometry we express volume in cubic units. So in other words, the volume represents the number of unit cubes it would take to fill the entire prism. And since the length, width, and height of the prism shown is measured in inches, our unit cube will have a length of 1 inch, a width of 1 inch, and a height of 1 inch. So if we were to take our rectangular prism and completely fill it from bottom to top with these 1 inch unit cubes, and then count the total number of cubes, that final total would represent the volume of the figure. Now counting every single one of these cubes would take a very long time and is not the most efficient way to find volume. Luckily, rectangular prisms have certain properties that allow us to apply general rules for finding volume, and we are going to explore those rules now. So let's imagine that we only use those one inch unit cubes to fill the bottom layer of this rectangular prism. To fill this bottom layer, we would need 10 cubes along the length and 4 cubes along the width. So basically, we would have 4 rows of 10 1 inch unit cubes. So to figure out the total number of 1 inch unit cubes to cover this bottom layer, we can just multiply 10 times 4, and our product is 40. So we have 40 cubes comprising this bottom layer of the rectangular prism. Now to determine how many of these 40 cube layers it would take to fill the entire prism, we have to look at the height, which is 7 inches, which means that we would need 7 layers of 40 cubes. So by multiplying 40 times 7, our product of 280 represents the total number of unit cubes it would take to fill this entire prism. So now we can conclude that the prism has a volume of 280 1 inch cubes or 280 cubic inches. So now let's go back to thinking about some of those general rules that apply to finding the volume of a rectangular prism. So in that last example, we found volume by first figuring out the number of cubes in the base layer, and then multiplying that value by seven, which represented the height of the figure. Now to find that number of cubes in the base layer, we found the area of the base, in this case the length times the width, or four times 10, and multiply that by seven. Now seven again represented the height. So we can conclude that we can define the volume of a rectangular prism by multiplying the area of the base by the height. <laughs> cool. And thinking about volume in this way should help us to better understand the more familiar formula for finding the volume of a rectangular prism, which is length times width times height. So in this case, that letter B, that base, represents the length times the width. So now moving forward, understand that you can use either formula for determining the volume of a rectangular prism. So now let's go ahead and try another example of finding the volume of a rectangular prism. Now in this case, our units are centimeters, so we want to figure out how many one centimeter unit cubes it would take to fill this figure from bottom to top. So let's go ahead and use the volume equals length times width times height approach. So in this example, the length and width are represented by seven centimeters and two centimeters, and the height is represented by five centimeters. So our next step is to substitute these values into the equation and then multiply. Now the product of the length and the width, seven and two is just 14, which represents the area of the base, multiplied by the height of five, and our product represents our volume, which is 71 centimeter cubes. And again, we can visualize this as five of those 
seven by two base layers stacked up from bottom to top. So now let's take our understanding of volume to the next level. For example, what if instead of expressing volume in one centimeter unit cubes, we wanted to express it in half centimeter unit cubes? Now, since this is a smaller unit, we should see that it's going to take several more of these smaller one half centimeter unit cubes to fill the entire rectangular prism. Now, since the dimensions are half the size, we have to divide the length, the width, and the height by two. Now what this does is it doubles the amount of cubes on the length from 7 to 14. It doubles the amount of cubes in the width from 2 to 4. And it doubles the amount of cubes in the height from 5 to 10. Now be sure to understand that the volume of the figure has not changed. That is the amount of space inside of this rectangular figure is still the same. However, since we are now using smaller unit cubes to fill the inside of the space, our volume will be represented by a larger number, however the unit will be smaller. So to find the volume of the figure now in terms of one half inch unit cubes, we use the same approach and that is using the formula Volume equals length times width times height. So by substituting 14 and 4 in for the length and the width, and substituting 10 in for the height, all we have to do is multiply. In this case, 14 times 4, the area of the base is 56. Multiply by 10 is 560. So the volume of the figure expressed in half centimeter cubes is 560. So now let's go ahead and take one last look at the difference between the two different units of measurement that we use to express the volume of that rectangular prism. So again, we use one centimeter cubes and one half centimeter cubes. So in terms of one centimeter cubes, the figure's volume was 70. And in terms of one half centimeter cubes, the figure's volume was 560. So by comparison, we should see that a one centimeter cube is the equivalent of eight one half centimeter cubes. So when we compare our volumes, our one centimeter volume was 70, and if we multiply 70 by eight, our result is 560. <laughs> cool. So by visualizing this relationship, we should be able to better understand how we express the volume of a figure and how that volume is dependent on the unit that we choose to use. So now let's go ahead and take on one final example where we want to find how many one quarter inch cubes will fit inside of the prism shown. Now notice that this prism has what's called fractional edges. That means that the dimensions of the length, the width, and the height are mixed numbers and include fractions. So in this case, our unit cubes are one fourth or one quarter inch in size. So we can imagine a one inch cube, a one half inch cube, and of course a one quarter inch cube, which will be very small. So our volume will be represented by a much larger number than if we had used a one inch cube. Okay, so even though two of our dimensions include fractions, we still use the same approach to finding volume, and that is the length times width times height formula. So first, let's look at the length of the figure, which is one and a half inches. We can think of this as a one inch unit cube alongside half of a one inch unit cube. And our next question should be, what would be the equivalent in one quarter inch unit cubes? Now we can think about this in terms of money. A quarter inch unit cube would be like a quarter. And that one and a half inch measurement would be like a dollar and 50 cents, one and a half or six quarters. So now we can replace that measurement of one and one half inches with six one quarter inch cubes. So in the case of one quarter inch cubes, our length is six. Now, since our width is one inch, we know that it would take four one quarter inch cubes to cover that width. So we can say that our width in terms of quarter inch cubes is four.
And we can apply the same thought process to the height, which is three and three quarters of an inch, which would be equivalent to 15 one quarter inch cubes. So we can replace our height with 15. And now to find the volume, all we have to do is multiply six times four, which is 24, multiplied by 15, results in our volume. So we can conclude that it would take 360 one quarter inch cubes to fill the entire prism. So just keep these strategies and concepts in mind as you continue to explore the properties of right rectangular prisms, especially in terms of their volume. And that is all for this lesson. Thank you again so much, everyone, and we'll catch you all next time. All right, so that lesson is over. I hope you found it helpful. And I want to thank you all again for being a member of our community here at Mashup Math on our YouTube channel. Now, if you want to stay up to date on all of our activity, be sure to subscribe to our mailing list. We send out a weekly newsletter that shares popular blog posts, our top Instagram posts of the week, and whatever new video lessons we published, along with some pretty cool contest giveaways and some free gifts as well. So we have some cool stuff offered exclusively on that mailing list. So if you want to join, just click the link here on the screen or in the description below, there's also a link to join as well. It's totally free, so something that you might find helpful and we would appreciate it if you would. And real quick, if you are not already subscribed to this channel, please do, we could really use the support. And again, we want to thank you for being a member of this community. It does mean a lot to us and we will catch all of you next time. See ya.